What is up, Epic Gamers? I am back with some more Sonic Adventure DX, emphasis on Sonic, because in today's video, we're gonna try to beat the entire game only using Sonic the Hedgehog. No Tails, no Knuckles, definitely no Big the Cat, just our favorite blue rat. We're gonna play through every story besides Sonic's story, since we already know he can be his own levels. To do this, we're using the character swap mod, which allows us to use Sonic outside of his own story. Now, when we use this mod in the overworld, some things don't really work that well. Some doors that should be open will remain closed, objects like the wind key might just vanish from our hands, and sometimes loading zones won't even actually be activated. This creates a bit of a problem because some levels do require steps to access that Sonic actually can't do, such as digging up the silver statue to access Knuckles' Lost World. And one could argue getting into the level should be a part of this challenge, but then we come across doors that don't open like this one leading to Knuckles' Chaos 2 fight, and even if we do find a way out of bounds to get around them, the loading zone just isn't activated. So for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to be counting any of the hub world for anything, we're only going to look at the bosses and the levels. If you guys like this kind of content and you want to see me do these challenges live right here on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm doing daily streams for the month of April, and we're doing tons of games and challenges. With all that said, let's jump into the video. Kicking things off with Tails' story. Egg Hornet plays the exact same as when Sonic fights him in his story, so we'll go ahead and skip it and we'll move on to Windy Valley. Sonic does play through this part of the level normally, and the only difference here is really we have to beat the Sonic AI to the finish line. And as funny as it is watching two Sonics race each other, we all know the AI in this game is not very difficult to beat. I was curious to see if Sonic can use these dash rings that Tails has, and it turns out that, yeah, he actually can. These aren't really required on this level, but it's still cool that they work. Other than that, the level plays pretty normal, so we're able to beat the imposter Sonic and move on to Casinoopolis. This one, again, is not too different from Sonic's version of the level. The only real difference is at the end, there's not a trail of rings to dash through like there normally is in his version. Frankly, a lot of the Tails levels don't have much differences, as Sonic also plays these levels during his story, and they mostly play the same. However, when we went into the third level, the character swap mod that I'm using for some reason loaded in Big the Cat instead of Sonic, and that was really funny. What the fu- <laughs> this, was not, this was not the transition I was expecting! <laughs> run, Big! Run! <laughs> The next few levels after that are all just boss fights that Sonic already fights during his story and then the Sky Chase minigame that he also does. So we'll fast forward to Sand Hill, which is actually the first level exclusive to Tails. But because it's a snowboarding level and Sonic can already snowboard, he can beat it no problem. One cool thing to mention though is that normally Tails has to fly up to this ledge to hit a button to actually open the level up, but with the well-timed spin dash jump, Sonic can actually also make it up here to open the level himself. I know we said we're not counting the overworld stuff, but this is still pretty cool and I wanted to point it out. The Sky Deck is up next, and once again, not too much to say here since Sonic does play this level too, and the layout doesn't really change in any significant way, so we're able to beat it easily. And the Gamma Fight that's up next is also the exact same thing. The final level of Tales of Story, however, is actually a little bit different. It plays normally up until we get to the helipad. Normally Sonic would ride a helicopter across this gap, but Tails is expected to fly around. We can spin dash jump and make it to this dash ring which gets us to the next area. And we'll do this a few more times to progress through the rest of the level. At the end, things get a little bit trickier. There's thankfully a rocket here that'll get us across this gap, which is great because that probably would have stopped us. I don't know why there's a rocket here in the first place, Tails can easily fly through this, but I guess if the player forgot to grab the jet anklet, that jump might be even hard for Tails. We did run into a small problem during this part because we had to die a few times while experimenting, and if we die, Eggman, who we're racing to the finish, will respawn at the checkpoint so we have a lot less time to make it to the end before he does. And, fun fact, I never knew this because I've never lost to the AI in this game, but if they beat you, you have to restart the entire level. So, that was fun to deal with. So, we just need to do some quick spin dash jumps and make sure not to waste any time riding the rotating platforms. We can hit another rocket which gets us all the way to the very end where we have our final roadblock. This last platform is just barely too high for Sonic to jump on normally. And because we needed the rocket to get here, we don't have anywhere else to jump up from. But I have 1000 IQ and came up with the idea to use the light speed dash attack, which just barely got us on the last platform and we beat the level. That brings us to the final fight versus the Egg Walker, and Sonic doesn't have too much trouble here. We can spin dash into his ankles to expose the weak spot and then homing attack him to damage him. Rinse and repeat a few times and we have officially beat Tails' story. 
Knuckles' story is up next, and this is where the run gets a little bit more interesting because now the levels and objectives are different. Hunting for emeralds with Sonic works just about the same as it does with Knuckles, but the levels are designed for Knuckles who can glide and climb walls, both of which Sonic cannot do, so he might gotta do some clever maneuvers to navigate around. But the first level isn't too bad, we're able to grab all three emeralds pretty easy. The game does crash if I beat the level as Sonic however, so going forward before grabbing the final emerald, we're gonna switch to Knuckles to avoid the game crashing, but we'll make sure that it's in a spot that Sonic can clearly get to, and will only switch at the last second. Casinoopolis is next, and we're able to get to the very top of the map using a spring on the ground floor. And up here we find the first emerald inside this enemy, and then the second emerald was nearby inside the lion's mouth. The final emerald was on top of the information booth, and Sonic can get on top of there by jumping from this ledge. And since Sonic is obviously able to get here, we'll switch to Knuckles and grab it to avoid a game crash. Chaos 2 is next, and this fight isn't too difficult, but it does take a little bit longer as Sonic because normally with Knuckles I'll just glide into him and then get damage him even while he's shielding, but Sonic has to wait until he does that stretchy punchy attack and is vulnerable. So it's a little more annoying, but it's not impossible. Red Mountain is next, and this one worried me because it's a very vertical level, and emeralds might now be buried underground since we just picked up the shovel claws. Luckily, we got lucky and we managed to get three emerald locations that we are able to get to. The first one was up on this pillar, and to get there we simply spin dash off this slanted rock to use it as a ramp, and then we get up there pretty easily. The second emerald was on top of the main tower, which we can get access to by taking this rocket all the way up. It's lucky for us they put rockets on here even though Knuckles can just climb up there. The final emerald was all the way down at the bottom, so we just had to very carefully jump from pillar to pillar, and we found the final emerald inside this enemy. We did get lucky with our emerald spawns on Red Mountain, because in the next level we encountered an emerald that was buried. Sonic obviously can't dig for these, but what's worse is unlike Sonic Adventure 2, where if you just die we can re-roll a new emerald, the emerald locations in this game do not reset after death. So we actually have to start the entire level over again, and then keep resetting until we get three emerald locations that are all above ground. And I spent a lot of time trying to get this emerald up here between these two rows of spikes, and I finally got it by using the wall platform to spin dash up onto the small ledge where I got shot by a flaming arrow so now I don't got any rings to work with. Then I had to do a very difficult spin dash jump to land between the spikes, grab the emerald just before I die, and I did all of that just for the next emerald to be buried underground so I have to reset the entire level. So uh, yeah, if you're doing this challenge, make sure that you check all three locations are possible before committing 30 minutes to a very difficult jump like that. So we reset the level, got three new emeralds, the first one was inside this little tunnel, the second one was just above that inside this enemy, and the final one was up on that flaming arrow platform, so I guess it was a good thing that I practiced making that jump after all. Sky Deck is next, and this level was behaving really weird. Immediately upon entering the level, it shifted vertically, causing Sonic to fall all the way to the bottom where we're luckily saved by an invisible wall. Normally, to tilt the level, Knuckles will use this lever at the start, but I think this happens because when Sonic plays this level normally, if you try to get up here, the level will tilt like this automatically, until Sonic pushes this button here to make it go back to normal. And even though we're in Knuckles' story, the game still seems to recognize that we're playing as Sonic, so it triggers the level to behave like it does in Sonic. Sonic story, which is pretty interesting. And this proved to make things a lot more challenging because the level goes back to normal, but if we get back to the start, it'll flip again. We were able to get this first emerald without triggering this tilting effect by spin dashing off this ramp and then making our way up and around the center platform, but the next two emeralds of course just had to be at the very start of the level inside these garbage chutes. Now I could have just reset the level to get new emerald locations, but I'm not a fake ass gamer who says no to a challenge, so instead I spent 30 minutes trying to get this emerald by spin dashing off the center platform, landing in front of it and then charging up another spin dash to grab the emerald before falling to the bottom of the level. And the final emerald was in the garbage chute next to this one, however in the knuckle stages, grabbing an emerald acts like a checkpoint, so now whenever I die or restart the level, I spawn inside this garbage chute, which causes the level to start tilting even before I spawn in. To get the final emerald, I had to pull out the 1000 IQ plays and do a technique that a lot of people probably don't even know is possible. First, I had to find the closest spot that I can stand that doesn't trigger the level to tilt. Then I charge up a light speed attack, and while still holding that charge, I need to do another spin dash forward timing it so I make it inside the garbage chute before the door closes, and once I'm inside, release the lightspeed attack to kill the enemy to get the last emerald. 
And that's gonna wrap up Knuckles' story since his final boss is Chaos 6, who we already fought with Sonic. So far, Sonic is absolutely killing this challenge. And I thought Amy's story would be a breeze since there's only three levels and one boss. Twinkle Park plays the exact same since there isn't really much of a difference from when Sonic does his level normally. And I thought maybe the mini game would be impossible since he doesn't have a hammer, but we're not counting the overworld anyway. And even if we were, he actually can beat this mini game since any attack will work on the targets. But then we got the hot shelter, and this is where we ran into a problem. Unlike every other level in the game, Sonic actually never visits the hot shelter during his story. And right at the start, we encounter this door that needs to be opened by turning this hand crank, and Sonic cannot interact with this like Amy would normally. This didn't stop me from trying though, because if we know one thing about Sonic games is that collision is a privilege and it can be revoked at any time. So I got to experimenting, and I found out that we can use the light speed attack to target some bubbles behind the first door, and then clip through it very easily. The next door we can clip through in this corner by spin dashing, and that'll get us into the next room. But this is where we hit a dead end. I tried for an entire hour to get out of this room, and the closest that I got was clipping out of bounds here, but then we immediately died, so it was a little used to us. We tried every other wall, but it was rock solid, and we even theorized possibly maybe getting up to the roof where this secret room is that Big can get up to on his hot shelter, but even if we did find a way for Sonic to get up here, there's nowhere to go from here. So after an hour of trying, we sadly had to call it quits here. But there is one more thing that we can try. See, I'm not the only licensed and certified Epic Gamer out there, so I reached out to Axel Thunder, who is a Sonic Adventure speedrunner, and he has helped me figure out so much stuff in the past in our previous challenges. And after he and another speedrunner named Gpro spitballed some ideas back and forth, they cracked the code and figured out how to beat this level. His method was clipping out of the elevator right at the start of the level, which is also a technique used in speedruns when playing as Amy. From there, we can move around this area, which is normally only accessible by Big the Cat, if you can believe that. Yeah, side note, he has an entire second half of this level with a checkpoint and everything. Not that you would ever need it, since Froggy is always going to be at the beginning, so I have no clue why they made him his own little special area that nobody else gets to access, but I'm glad they did because this is what allows Sonic to end up beating this level. We can spin dash from this ledge and jump out of bounds and then land in the area behind that other door that we couldn't get past. From there, he clips out of bounds in the bathroom by using this door to push him out while he's jumping. And then from here, the level plays out normally. There's no more hand cranks to use and Sonic can interact with the puzzle blocks to clear this room normally. Or if you're a god like Axel Thunder, you can just spin dash off this ledge, jump all the way up here and clip out of bounds. Either way, the rest of the level is very much doable. So it turns out, after days of experimenting and enlisting the help of the Council of Sonic Adventure speedrunners, Hot Shelter is possible to be as Sonic. So I gotta say a huge thank you to Axel Thunder and Gpro for helping me figure this out. Their channels are linked below, please go drop them a sub and check out their videos if you want to see this game being played at the highest possible level. Final Egg is Amy's last level, and it doesn't play too much differently from Sonic's. We're just going down Amy's route instead. But there are no more Amy-specific gimmicks this time around, so we end up clearing this level with no issues whatsoever. And that brings us to the final fight versus Zero. This fight is doable as Sonic, but it's a little bit finicky. His homing attack doesn't really target Zero's weak spot, probably because it was intended to be damaged by Amy's hammer. So we just have to jump at it at that sweet spot for the damage to register. Because of this, I actually got to see an attack that he does that I've actually never experienced before since I've always beat him pretty quickly, so that was pretty cool to see. So after defeating Zero, we are now three characters down, and everything so far has been possible. But now we have Big the Cat's levels, and I thought this was going to put a stop to the run since Sonic can't fish for Froggy. I was theorizing that maybe the way to win these levels is to go out of bounds and then find the capsule that will normally be there for Sonic. This actually does work in some levels, for example in Knuckles' Lost World, we can get out of bounds and then fly into the room that Sonic finishes the level in, and then he can beat that level that way without ever collecting an emerald. So that's what I thought we were going to have to do with Big's levels. However, to my surprise, if we enter the level as Sonic, Froggy just acts like a collectible item and we just have to touch him in order to clear the stage. I was actually shocked this happened until I thought about it and then I realized in one of Gamma's levels, Froggy is in this collectible state at the end of the level. So I guess the game just checks if it's Big playing and then if it's not, it'll put Froggy in that grabbable state. So because of this, every single big level is actually doable and very easy. The hardest part of Big Story is an ice cap, we have to find another way around the underwater since Sonic can't break the ice on the floor, but there's plenty of other paths that we can take, so Big Story wasn't an issue. That is, until we got to the Chaos 6 boss fight, which you're probably thinking is easy since Sonic fights him normally, right? Well, Big's Chaos 6 fight is a little bit different. 
Big doesn't actually fight Chaos, he just needs to grab Froggy to win. And sadly, unlike the other levels, Sonic is unable to grab Froggy from Chaos, even if we touch him while he's inside of him. And this is pretty cut and dry, there's no out of bounds trick, no speedrun technique, nothing we can do to bypass this. So as much as it hurts to say, this is just simply impossible for Sonic to do. So after all of this, it was a Big the Cat boss fight that put an end to this challenge. I know this is very sad though, so to cheer us all up, here's a clip of me accidentally switching to Eggman instead of Sonic during a cutscene. Oh, why is he Eggman? <laughs> Well, we might as well finish out the challenge with Gamma's levels. I mean, we've come this far, right? And look at him. If we load the cutscene as Sonic, he gets squished down. He's like a little mini Gamma. How could we not play his story? He's just a little guy. His first level plays fine, right up until the very end. There's an invisible wall that stops us from simply jumping across to the Sonic doll. Luckily, for some reason, there's a spring and a platform up here, and also some more rings and additional targets to shoot. I don't know why you would ever need extra time on this level, but this helps us for our challenge, so I'm not complaining. The invisible wall does go up pretty high, but we can get around it here. And luckily Sonic can break the Sonic doll, so we're able to beat the level. Next up, we gotta fight Gamma's brother. Nothing too interesting to talk about during these. Sonic can damage him just fine, so we quickly clap him and then move on to the next level. Emerald Coast is also a pretty straightforward level, and we don't even have to worry about the time limit on these levels. So really, nothing more to talk about here. So we'll grab Froggy, and then it's time to fight the next box, which just so happens to be an imposter Sonic. It was really funny seeing Sonic fight himself. Windy Valley is up next, and just like with Tails' levels, there's not really too much to talk about. Unlike in Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic can destroy any target intended for Gamma, so aside from that, navigating to the end of the level isn't really interesting. And the boss fight is super easy, only a fake ass gamer would die here. Red Mountain once again is a walk in the park. In fact, we can actually spin dash and jump past pretty much all the obstacles, so it's even easier. And then the boss fight plays out exactly like the last one. And that brings us back to the hot shelter, which once again causes problems for us. This time we don't have any hand cranks as they're not there in Gamma's version of the level. We did have a little bit of trouble hitting this button and then making it back to the crane in time, since we can't shoot it from afar like Gamma would, but we managed to get through that no problem. The real problem is at the very end of the level. We have to fight another one of Gamma's cousins, however this one's a little bit different. He's not a regular robot who runs around, he's a stationary robot in the center of the room, and there's an invisible wall surrounding him, preventing Sonic from dealing any damage, even with a light speed attack. And just like in Big's Chaos 6 fight, there isn't any fancy speedrun technique or anything that's gonna help us here. So unfortunately, we are now at two boss fights that Sonic is unable to do. And that brings us to the final fight of the game, at least this guy's possible. Sonic is able to damage him just fine. I tried using the light speed attack to see if it cheeses the fight like it does with Chaos 6, but it only does one damage to him, so the fight does play out as normal. We do have to make sure he doesn't fly out of bounds when he's doing his attacks though, but that's easy enough. We just have to make sure we're not standing at the edge of the stage while he's charging at us. Aside from all that, there's really not much to talk about, so we beat him and we clear Gamma Story and finish the challenge. So the answer sadly is no, Sonic cannot beat Sonic Adventure without the assistance from at least two of his friends. Amy, Tails, and Knuckles can all take a vacation, but we do need Big and Gamma to be able to beat this game. It turns out the real adventure is the friends we make along the way. And that's it for today's video gamers, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I gotta give a big shout out to the people who tuned into the stream. Our Sonic Adventure streams here on YouTube are always absolutely insane. We get like 100 people showing up for that, it's super awesome. And I'm actually doing daily streams for the entire month of April as a celebration for hitting 10k subscribers. And I'm doing all sorts of old school games like this, not just Sonic Adventure. I played some Pikmin, Luigi's Mansion, Dead Rising, Animal Crossing New Leaf. We do multiplayer games like Mario Party and Mario Kart, so if you like videos like this and you like games like those, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my next live streams or videos. Thank you all so much again for watching, and as always, stay epic gamers.